On April Fool's Day, the joke is on Canadian taxpayers as Trudeau gifts his corrupt MPs yet another extravagant pay hike. While squeezing citizens with higher carbon taxes, he's delivering a huge bribe to his MPs in a desperate attempt to stop defections from his sinking liberal ship. This outrageous pay hike comes as polls show voters are fed up with his hypocrisy and failure on many issues. But Trudeau doesn't care. He's using our tax dollars to buy loyalty from his liberal mafia before they abandon him. With an election looming, the prime hypocrite is in damage control mode. This lavish six-figure salary already makes MPs the world's second highest paid, and now Trudeau wants them to have even more. And they are falling for it. They know how the game is played. Trudeau hopes padding their pockets will keep liberal elites loyal amid his collapsing support. But when does it stop? Surely Trudeau knows he can't bribe them forever. One liberal official seems to also share this sentiment, as he has admitted that Trudeau doesn't stand a chance against Polyev in the next elections. Even the liberals know it. So when will Trudeau accept his defeat? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Trudeau's tone-deaf April Fool's pay raise for MPs is not funny. On the same day Canadians will face punishing hikes to the hated carbon tax, Trudeau is handing out raises to his corrupt liberal MPs. Their salaries will climb as high as the costs of gas, groceries, and housing that average citizens struggle to afford. The worst part is that Trudeau doesn't seem to care about the blatant hypocrisy. As thousands of Canadians prepare to protest his carbon tax scam on April 1st, He's making sure his inner circle gets a bigger slice of the pie. MPs will see their base pay jump from $194,600 to $203,100 annually. For the Prime Minister, the raise is even more outrageous. Justin Trudeau's salary will increase by $17,000 to $406,200. Keep in mind, this is on top of the generous perks and benefits MPs enjoy, like free travel and expenses. To put their salaries into perspective, the average Canadian income is around $63,000. Our MPs are paid three times that amount, putting them solidly in the top income bracket. Yet every year they help themselves to more of our tax dollars like it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. The worst part is that under Trudeau's government, these raises happen automatically on April 1st. There's no debate, no vote. The increases just magically appear in MPs' bank accounts right on schedule. The Board of Internal Economy, which oversees MP salaries, is nothing but a rubber stamp committee chaired by the Speaker of the House. It's especially offensive when you consider that 80% of Canadians actually oppose these yearly increases, according to a recent poll. With inflation driving up the cost of everything, ordinary citizens are barely scraping by. The Conservatives under Stephen Harper showed leadership by freezing MP salaries for three years between 2010 to 2013 during the global financial crisis. But Trudeau only knows how to take and spend money, not how to exercise restraint during tough economic times. Thanks to Trudeau, Canada now has the second highest paid politicians in the world behind only the United States. Our MPs make more than those in Australia, Singapore, and other developed nations. EU countries like Germany, Italy, and the UK pay their elected representatives less than we do here. When it comes to his corrupt liberal MPs, Trudeau wants Canada to rank just second to the US in political salaries. But it's okay if he allowed Canada to fail and everything else. Clearly, Canadian MPs feel entitled to a fancy lifestyle funded by taxpayers. While Canadians line up at food banks and job fairs, politicians feast on expensive lunches and collect multiple pensions. Trudeau claims to be a champion of the middle class, but he has no problem taking more and more of their hard-earned money. His virtue signaling about climate change and equality rings hollow when he continually enriches himself and his cronies. Like all liberals, his hypocrisy knows no bounds. He preaches diversity and inclusion, yet his cabinet is dominated by wealthy elites. He claims to fight for the impoverished, but his policies have fueled inflation that disproportionately hurts the poor. Trudeau is the very definition of a limousine liberal, hopping on a private jet to give speeches about saving the environment, scolding Canadians to reduce their carbon footprint while his jets set across the globe on frivolous trips. The rules never seem to apply to him and his inner circle. Franco Terrazano of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation rightly said, The federal government is more than $1 trillion in debt, 
Taxpayers are struggling to afford basic necessities and MPs don't deserve raises. So this is the perfect time to stop rubber stamping the pay raises politicians give themselves every year. MPs stopped pay raises in the past and they should stop this year's pay raise. Canadians have had enough of Justin Trudeau's hypocrisy and the shameless entitlement of his liberal government. His latest insult of an automatic April 1st raise for MPs while citizens endure painful inflation will be the final straw. The recent survey by Abacus data reveals just how disillusioned Canadians have become after eight years of Trudeau. The poll of over 3,500 adults found that only 23% would vote liberal if an election were held today, compared to 41% who would support the Conservatives under Pierre Polyev. Even more damning, just 15% believe the Trudeau government deserves re-election, while a staggering 59% disapprove of his performance as Prime Minister. His net favorability rating has cratered to minus 34 points. The poll indicates voters see right through Trudeau's progressive facade. 61% say he's focused on the wrong priorities and 53% see a lack of transparency in his government. Only one in four Canadians believe the country is on the right track. Among younger demographics, the liberal support is even lower, with the conservative lead growing among millennials and Gen Z. This suggests younger generations recognize Trudeau's failures and hypocrisy. The conservatives enjoy a net four-point favorability, while Trudeau's rating is a dismal minus 34 points. Nearly half of respondents predict a conservative landslide if an election occurred today compared to just 21% seeing a liberal victory. With his approval tanking and even his own team turning against him, Trudeau is straight up bribing liberal MPs to keep them loyal before the next election. This sketchy raise they will get on April 1st is the latest trick up his sleeve. Trudeau's liberal MPs know the party is heading for a big loss to Polyev's conservatives if things keep going like this. Polyev's conservatives are stomping them by 15 to 20 points as regular liberal voters walk away. Trudeau's government is collapsing, no question. So Trudeau is pulling out all the desperation moves to stop his own team from abandoning ship. He can't have liberal MPs defecting to the conservatives or retiring rather than face defeat. That would just make his sinking ship look even worse. This huge raise for all MPs is Trudeau just blatantly buying their loyalty, even though the liberals are tanking hard. He's hoping the promise of big money will keep liberal backbenchers from bailing on him when the party is down bad. Even loyal liberal supporters like Andrew Perez expose the cracks in Trudeau's facade and his doomed loss to Polyev. After 20 years as a liberal volunteer and activist, Perez laments how the party has lost its way under Trudeau's leadership. Trudeau's fixation on virtue signaling and identity politics has caused the liberals to neglect pressing economic issues. As Perez notes, the party has failed to deliver a credible plan to address the affordability crisis squeezing Canadian families. Instead, Trudeau seems content to saddle future generations with reckless deficits while eroding Canada's growth potential. His feel-good progressive rhetoric rings hollow for urban and liberal voters struggling to get ahead. As Perez describes, the liberals are hemorrhaging support among their urban professional base, socially progressive, small-l liberal voters who feel Trudeau has betrayed their values. Many are now willing to take a chance on Polyev's conservatives despite misgivings. For veteran liberals like Perez, this is a painful reality to accept. But he knows Canada cannot afford more years of Trudeau's empty virtue signaling and misplaced priorities. Even loyalist insiders now see that new leadership is required to restore the pragmatic liberal tradition. This just shows how pathetic Trudeau's dying government has become. He's handing out jobs and raises left and right trying to delay his fate for a few more months. But Canadian voters will kick Trudeau to the curb for his bribery and failed leadership. You can count on it. Trudeau is willing to throw Canada under the bus to keep his liberal buddies happy. They'll break every rule in the book if it means clinging to power a little longer. But Canadians have seen through Trudeau's lousy leadership and the numbers paint a clear picture. Canadians are fed up with the crooked liberals who don't understand their daily economic struggles. Trudeau's time is up. His collapsing poll numbers reveal a public hungry for accountable conservative leadership focused on citizens again. Well, that's all for now. How much more taxpayer money will Trudeau squander on dubious carbon taxes and MP pay hikes? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.